Okay, so a uh, few words on myself. Uh, I went through an interesting journey during my, my career. I started uh, my journey with Ambers and with food industry 10 years ago uh, as a kitchen chef in one of the restaurants that, that we've operated uh, here in Wrocław, where our headquarters is. Then I was moved from that to uh, from that to uh, POS system implementation team in IT and then became responsible for that POS uh, team. So I was managing point of sale uh, deployment across uh, Central and Eastern Europe for, uh, for Amrest. At that time, we were uh, the size of 350 restaurants. Then I was moved to the role of project management office uh, manager. So I managed project management office and I also so um, delivered uh, business solutions for uh, for our organization. And uh, in 2013 and 14, we started getting into digital and I was managing most of those projects. And uh, then clearly I moved to focus only on digital and my role right now is being responsible for all the technology and implementation that are behind uh, our digital uh presence and we also cooperate uh, closely with uh, marketing and other departments to to make that run i will also talk about that um briefly so a little bit on amres most of you might not know what uh, what amres is because we are not that visible as a brand uh, we operate restaurants mostly as frederick mentioned it's kfc pizza hut uh, starbucks uh, but we also operate uh, Burger King. We also operate uh, La Tagliatella in Spain and uh, a brand called Blue Frog that we operate in China and we right now implement that to Europe. Um, our um, business commitment is to deliver a uh, stable 20% growth year over year to our uh, shareholders and uh, you can see that uh, we're growing quite, uh, quite rapidly uh, over last few years that's through organic growth uh, meaning building restaurants uh, implementing di digital but also through acquisition and we are more and more present in uh, in europe uh, we are now operating in it says 14 but it's 15 because it doesn't have germany on the slide uh, so we're operating in uh, all those countries managing uh, our own or franchised restaurants um, for the brands that um, that i've listed and our ambition in three years is to become number one restaurant operator in Europe. Right now, we are on the second place behind Eurest uh, company. So that is uh, that is on Amrest. And now a little bit on uh, on our digital uh, journey. We entered that quite late, 2013, 2014. Uh, a lot was already happening uh, in digital, and uh, it wasn't perceived in the company. As, um, as a strategic uh, way of growth until we actually launched it. So uh, 2013 and then 2014, we launched two um, projects. First was, one, first was my Starbucks rewards program for uh, Starbucks, which is collecting points and stars and, and getting rewards for that. Uh, when that launched, it drew a lot of attention from uh, from the media in the countries and it also delivered quite good results for um, for the business but the turning point uh, was uh, launching online ordering for KFC and Pizza Hut at that time we only delivered in Warsaw which is capital of um, of Poland right now we deliver in Poland Czech Republic Hungary uh, France already had delivery when we when we took over planning to launch that in uh, in Germany in uh, in few months but um, the turning point was that when we launched the online delivery service we only had call center before and our plans was to grow by 15 percent quarter to quarter so we wanted to reach 50 percent of uh, of share in uh, digital compared to the call center within three quarters so the first week of launching KFC delivery in Poland, we were already 25% digital. So people immediately moved to ordering via uh, e-commerce. And then after the next three months, we were over 50%. Right now it's 75, 20. So that dragged the attention of the company to, to digital and, uh, and e-commerce and show how important channel that um, that is and uh, led us to 
um, to the rest of the story that uh, I'll continue further on. Over 2015 and 2016, we've been growing over 20% year over year on delivery. We've also launched a number of other programs like Loyalty for Pizza Hut. Uh, we enabled mobile, mobile app ordering for uh, Pizza Hut and, and KFC. And we've also deployed that uh, geographically to um, Czech Republic and then uh, Hungary as well. Right now, we see that uh, we are expanding, but there are still small things, like there are still big things that we need to uh, focus on. And that's basically on getting smarter. So how do we use the data that we've been collecting for all those uh, years? Uh, exploring new option, meaning um, both uh, aggregators try using beacons to understand how this technology can work and, and benefit for us. Implant uh, aggregators, if uh, if you don't know, is um, food delivery companies like Delivery Hero, um, GrabCup, um, Deliveroo. So they um, basically deliver for different uh, restaurant brands. They don't operate restaurants. We also implementing new components uh, to make meaningful changes for the customers. This can be uh, some we call smart smart apps and engines so how and what we should show to customers to make sure that this is relevant for them and uh, our ambition is uh, to become uh, a market leader in in the restaurant industry on every market we operate the last thing we we are expanding right now to is building partnership and that means um, technological partnership but also business partnership aggregators is one of them but uh, there are others that um, that we are right now looking at so from strategic from the perspective the same journey look um, in a way that we first focus on building foundations so making sure that our uh, processes and technology works and start collecting the data we also had to build organization and team to, to manage this, and uh, I'll, I'll um, speak about this a little bit more broadly later on. Then we moved to uh, driving actions. So we started communicating actively through the channels, enhancing the platforms, adding new sources of, uh, of data to, um, to our core databases, uh, like uh, Google Analytics and, uh, and others. I'll also um, explain that later and starting interconnecting the, the components of so integrating um, different elements of, uh, of the programs we have for us and for uh, for customers and uh, right now we are in the in the point when when we actively try to connect the know-how we we have and the data we have with the actions and that also has uh, uh, drive some some challenges for us then we, uh, our focus is to, to connect and interconnect challenge, uh, channels and um, get further on with, uh, with the integration, as well as using uh, new technologies like uh, AI, machine learning and cognitive science to be able to support our processes and, and business to, to ensure um, the growth. This picture shows uh, how we perceived uh, um, our digital flywheel uh, when we started entering digital. So we've mapped out all the um, sources uh, that feed our digital and um, where the team and the organization should focus on understanding how all these pieces work, how do they contribute to, the, to, to our customers and to us, and how we should interconnect those elements to, to better understand what customers need and how we can satisfy that, uh, that needs. So walking you briefly through that from starting from um, top uh, right, it's web ordering where we, when we actually have uh, transactions and uh, we uh, connect sales and, and customer data to loyalty program when uh, we have more personal information and more preferences of, uh, of customers as well as uh, understanding the frequency that they use our brands with. Through Wi-Fi, uh, that is an interesting piece. We provide Wi-Fi in every single restaurant we operate, at least in Central Eastern Europe. That's managed by Orange and uh, Meraki, depends uh, on the country. So we can understand how the customers flow, not only inside the restaurant uh, when it's peak and we switch them between access points, but also we can understand how people flow between our restaurants. So we can compare 
uh, how customers uh, that use Starbucks, um, whether they are more likely to use Pizza Hut or KFC, where do they flow, where do we see them in other restaurants, also a little bit of um, geographical understanding of, uh, of customers' uh, migration. We don't use much of this data, but um, but we um, but we collect them, and uh, we also plan to test uh, direct communication based on that. But we haven't done that yet, and uh, I think that uh, we will need to consider that very very um, well because uh, with uh, personal data protection, it uh, it might be a little bit more difficult uh, for the next year. Then we have newsletters, media, and uh, communication with customers social media to understand uh, the profiles of our customers and uh, get additional data and engage them. GFP stands for Guest Feedback Program. So our guests get the um, invitation to a survey every um, some transactions. And when they when they uh, um, fill that out, they, they can get uh, a free twister or something like that in the, in the restaurant with their next visit. That provides us with, uh, with feedback, but also with some of the customers Customer data, and at the end there is a POS system, which is registering transactions and tracks redemption of our actions, and the mapping system. Uh, that is an interesting thing that that is supporting our delivery, so it defines our delivery zones and uh, also allows us to understand social demographics of our customers and uh, location-driven analytics. I will show an example um, in a minute. So based on based on that, we we started uh, from the very beginning to build uh, roadmaps. Um, they look very different right now. That's an historical example, but uh, I kind of have sentiment for that. Um, so that's how we envisioned how do we make that uh, digital fly will work over time. We've done some of these. We haven't done a lot. Uh, I mean, we've dropped a lot, and we've done some of these. It's really uh, in our organization very much driven by what works and what doesn't work and it's also driven by by the resources we we have to to implement that the biggest challenge we had was actually a digital team and uh, i don't know where are where are you on your digital uh, journey with your organizations but that was the most critical thing we we had to resolve there's a number of departments that have to be engaged people really do not understand uh, what digital means. Uh, there is um, natural fear from technology when people um, have to transfer from traditional marketing to digital marketing. There are challenges when people uh, from customer care had to transfer from supporting only online customers to offline customers to also supporting online customers when it has to be much quicker and through different tools. There were uh, barriers. There are also barriers with uh, with brands and uh, people. The understanding um, whether we should actually invest money in building restaurants or we should uh, put the same money in developing digital systems to drive transactions to that restaurants. And uh, it also hit operations in terms of how do they deploy staff because a lot of transactions started coming not through to the cashier desk. So uh, they got much more busier in the in the kitchens that they could expect, and it required a whole lot of changes inside the restaurants to make sure that we are able to to deliver the food within promised 30 minutes uh, to customer door. And that was one of the biggest challenges that uh, that we've had. And on top of that, there was data because uh, if before we were not at all. A digital company and we weren't very much based on the data we we're much more based on how we call it gut feeling uh here um right now a lot of things has changed and become more, much more data driven and we use data to make a decision rather than not but it took quite a lot of challenge to convince that um, the gut feeling of the people uh, it's not the best, especially when they're, when those people are uh, exec team members, but um, that was um, quite of the journey. When we started designing how digital should look like in the company, uh, we've called uh, a matrix structure that was um, 
taught us commitment from different departments, but uh, not creating a dedicated uh, digital team, just cooperate on digital and making uh, this a piece of work of um, other departments. So we created a, a digital board, CEP board, it's written here, it stands for Customer Engagement Platform. That's what we initially we called our uh, digital, now it's digital uh, only. That was uh, built from IT director, marketing director. BP stands for brand presidents, which is presidents for uh, our uh, restaurant chains, KFC president, Pizza Hut president, Starbucks and so on. And division presidents are people who manage our geographical divisions. Uh, like Western Europe, uh, Central and Eastern Europe, Russia and, uh, and China. The whole thing was supposed to, to be led by PMO and uh, head of the um, customer engagement program, which was me at that time. And we were connecting a number of uh, um, different departments, like marketing, uh, planning and analysis, operations, IT and project management uh, office. And everybody in that structure had a role that uh, that should work. We also wanted to be supported by accounting, legal, and uh, also other departments to make sure that uh, that works. And everybody had uh, had a role in this. And vertically, it was at that time divided divided for uh, W O R stands for web ordering and loyalty is um, it's clear and also Wi-Fi. So in the very beginning, we only had those three channels that we uh, that we wanted to, um, to focus on. Honestly, that didn't work very well. It didn't work for, for a number of reasons. Um, there wasn't a single uh, command line between people, so they were involved with their own bosses with different stuff and they couldn't commit enough time to, uh, to digital. There was a um, several conflict of uh, of interest, especially between marketing and IT, on uh, on who actually owns digital and who is uh, who is managing that in the company. Uh, we had challenges with planning and analysis because they um, primarily were uh, set up to do financial analysis. They weren't able to do any customer analytics and things like that. And uh, happily, operations was always uh, very supportive, and they adapted very quickly to uh, to the change. And on the PMO team side, we we are always lacking uh, experienced PMs that that could really manage this um, these sections. So from uh, when we started with this, we ended up with uh, a structure that looks like this. Since digital became one of the strategic pillars for for the entire company. Uh, we've called in a person that is called Chief Commercial Officer, and that person is uh, is a board member and uh, one of the highest um, people in uh, in the organization. And he overlooks right now digital marketing uh, aggregator because we've um, we've bought um, one of the aggregators on Polish market, and uh, also fleet which is our delivery operation. So how do we deliver food to, uh, from restaurants to, to customers? And focusing on, on digital team only, right now it's, uh, it's a matrix structure, but all people are dedicated and work in, in digital department and uh, are managed by digital director. And we have three like the function layers, which is customer data, communication, and technology that cooperate with, uh, with the brands on delivering solutions and managing digital um, or digital uh, actions and uh, and presence and that is deployed across countries so um, the functions are the same and they are centralized so customer data communication and technology brands are managed locally but they are from digital perspective they are overlooked by by central uh, we call it uh, like um, digital brand manager. So KFC has digital brand manager. Pizza Hut has one as well, and we work together to get that um, to get that stuff um, resolved. And that works quite well. Also, although we the challenges we face is um, is the speed. So we we're still not able to move at the at the pace we we would like to. That's one thing. And the second thing is um, resources. 
we are still very short on uh, on resources both internally and externally and it's quite difficult to build teams that can cooperate very quickly in a very complex uh, environment and they are from you know number of companies that build that digital partnership uh, with us i didn't include external partners here uh, but there is also a number of external companies that we work with uh, on um, on our digital um, actions. Next thing is um, is data source sources, and that's um, that's one of the biggest challenges that um, that we have been facing and we, we are facing still. We generate a lot of data, really plenty of them, through our website, apps, bots, customer care kiosks, point of sales, map, and communication. <clears throat> we are not so good in, in analyzing them, but I kind of tried to um, um, show you the funnel that it goes through. So we generate the data through um, to the action points where customer actually interacts with us. Then we collect them in um, in, um, could be databases, could be uh, analytic sources, could be different websites and uh, different partners. And then we have to clean and join this, uh, this data uh, and then put it into some kind of reporting and analytical uh, engines and get the right insight. And the problem here that is that we, when we produce that mass of the data, uh, getting them connected right find out what's actually working and what's not working and uh, knowing which data to connect to build uh, relevant and true insight is very very difficult and that takes at least a year of training of the analyst that already knows how to analyze but doesn't understand the the setup and the data to be able for him to be able to talk to um, brand managers and um, generate insights that that can be really relevant and work, and then we have to um, test and learn from uh, from that insights. The challenge we have here we have the, um, is that we have a lot of behaviors of the customers, so we know what they do and we know how they behave on the website. Where do they drop off? How do they purchase? How do they behave with the kiosk? How do they behave with um, um with uh, with our uh, uh, apps where do they uh, leave actually from uh, from the map but what we don't know is their motivation so what drives them to to behave like that for that we we have called this uh, customer data function and uh, their role is not only to collect and make sure that this data works but also to collect that data with, uh, with external data from research, from uh, questionnaires we, we run, from uh, data of uh, like data delivery companies that uh, inspect uh, food delivery market and food market in general, to understand how people, why people behave like they behave, and if this if this behavior we observe is comparable to to other behaviors and what might be the motivation of the people because not when we know all that pieces then we can react and uh, and act smartly and um, from move from segmentation of the customers and speaking to segments to actually start speaking to moments of when people want to transact and when they have the motivation to um to transact with us and that's that's the all ultimate goal that we uh, that we see and we we heading to so challenges we've uh, we've been and we are uh, facing right now is getting right people on the board it's not always the smartest thing to try to transfer people from non digital to digital not a lot of people want to really uh, learn and uh, this learning has to be fast so we applied a mixture of things so get people from outside that are very specialized in the things that uh, that we need but on the other hand we promote a lot of people from operations that are uh, experienced with uh, with managing digital so like um, to give you an example one of the pizza hut store managers that were the best in um, selling our loyalty program to uh, to guests in in his restaurants came on board for digital 
to work with other restaurants to help them um, do the same. And uh, that's the connection that is very, very unique. And uh, we constantly look out for, for that type of, uh, of people. Some of them came from IT, some of them came from marketing, some of them came from operations, and some of them came from, uh, from outside. But it's uh, it's highly difficult to to get that team uh, um, in place. Second big challenge we have is to maintain the data. The amount of data and the pace of changes that we face is uh, is huge. And to maintain the data cleanness, uh, maintain the, um, the changes that we've we've done to the data and uh, to what we, for instance, collect to what people have to uh, agree to. And uh, when we do the changes to the website to really um, solidly map out new website to the old website. So we make sure that Google Analytics gives us the same customer journey and uh, and it's still trackable and we can compare apples to apples in this case. That was, uh, that that are the challenges that, that we are constantly facing. It's, it's very time consuming, needs a lot of detail and needs really people that uh, specialize and understand a number of data sources and uh, know how to connect that uh, that elements and that's usually three also um, driving a challenge from from our operations perspective because they want to move fast they want to enable the app and they don't want to hear that we need to uh, do another weeks of recon Connecting new app to, to Google Analytics to, to maintain integrity of, um, of the data. As I mentioned before, concluding smartly is one of the biggest challenges that, uh, that we have. Uh, that requires uh, a unique knowledge. So you need to know the organization, you need to know the customer, you need to know the, under, uh, the industry. And you also need to understand uh, data and be able to compare right data to to each other to drive and generate uh, insights. And that is very, very um, difficult. And we are right now focusing on building a data science team uh, that, that will be able to do that and will use external tools and external know-how on, uh, um, on getting that um, insights built, but we also, on the other hand, want that knowledge to be inside the organization because that is ultimately our competitive advantage. If we understand our customers very well, that knowledge has to sit within within the company. Uh, we don't want to outsource that knowledge, but we were happy to outsource the tools and we are happy to get the know-how from, uh, from others. It's an interesting cooperation because uh, there is a lot of... Uh, big data and uh, analytics companies right now that uh, fit to that model because they don't want to um, they want to understand our data and uh, become partner because that helps them to become partner for other people for other uh, companies in retail and in the industries so um, we do a lot of uh, this kind of uh, partnerships right now when we when we get somebody to help understand the data and a lot of them uh, don't want money for that, but they want to be able to use the knowledge that they've gained by analyzing our data uh, within uh, within the market. We agree to that because um, uh, with with some restrictions, so it cannot go to McDonald's, but it can go to to retail stores, not knowing, not letting them know that it comes from us. But uh, it helps um, understand the whole market better, and we get the same think uh, from from that analytics company as um, as a result of uh, of this kind of exchange and we exchange a lot of data also with our partners like uh, payment uh, terminal providers like uh, online payments like uh, um, external uh, coupons company like aggregator that that we cooperate with so we also exchange data with uh, with those um, partners so some some examples of the effects that 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 we've reached. That's uh, that are two pictures from our mapping system, and uh, on the top picture it actually shows one of the Polish cities, and um, the colored uh, things in the middle are our delivery zones. 
with the numbers in it and the numbers is the name of the liver is on and the restaurant that and that operates it and around you see the red dots that was that is the result of the decision we have made to start saving the people request on the website so when you type an address to kfc and we say we don't deliver we would save the address that you've typed and present it as a red dot on the map and that really helped us to uh, start opening restaurants on based on the know-how we have and right now we deliver we uh, open 90 percent of deliver restaurants on capex so they meet business uh, assumptions when we build them and um, we are able to to see what is uh, what is on the bottom left so when you select the area on the map you know how many orders potential orders they there are and what's the potential monthly revenue from um, from that section if you open restaurant that or if you there or if you extend this uh, delivery zone we also based our delivery zones on uh, on on pretty much scientific data so we get live traffic and we estimate what's the drive time and we make sure that uh, this drive drive time to to the entire zone is not bigger than 8 minutes to make sure that we are able to complete the whole transaction within within 30 minutes from from delivery and deliver hot food to to customers door that's one of the competitive advantages that 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 we've managed to build thanks to investment in in digital the other thing is uh, is pure analytics and segmentations we uh, we make that's one of the latest uh, segmentation of uh, Starbucks rewards customers so we see how many how impactful are our uh, visitors and we divide them into low value one timers medium value high value and top high value and we know how many of them and how many transactions they make what's their average check how many visits they make and right now we're building uh, an automated solution that will be addressing them differently so we don't want to speak to, to this all these people the same way we need to speak to them in in a relevant way with understanding on on how do they use the brand and what one of the examples is that when we initially started with uh, with these offers we would pretty much offer you a coffee uh, anytime you you get the communication from starbucks but it turned out that uh, there is a number of people that are our loyal members they never drink coffee they they drink tea and they, they eat with starbucks or they drink juices or something else and we keep sending them um, coffee offers which they never reacted to so we've, when we've changed that we've seen the huge increase of their uh, engagement within within the brand and uh, um, redemption of the coupons because we've been able to understand what they need and address them uh, with the right offer now uh, that's another view on the on the same segmentation so we show we divided customers within turbo active active and lapsed and um, based on their frequency and we see that um, like what you could expect that the biggest lapsation is uh, with the least frequent uh, customers and it gets lower as you as you make them more uh, more frequent and um, the actions that we're driving through that so trying to move a person from red level to blue level gives us a lot of impact in terms of business and, and re er, revenue that we're getting first this person is less uh, likely to lapse second they generate uh, a lot more of uh, transactions for us this is another example of uh, what we what we do that's our pizza hut web Website analytics based on how people behave and transact and um, so the, the left one shows how uh, what percentage of the people who transact in what time and uh, it clearly shows that most of the transactions we have over a weekend or we have some other strong uh, moments but when we compare that with uh, the average check and how people spend money it also shows that um, there is a lot higher likelihood for people to accept high value meal in the evening rather than uh, in the morning for or for uh, lunch and the same thing happens for uh, for weekends so 
that helps us to um, build our offer according, accordingly to, to what people are more likely to, um, to do when they interact with our website. We don't know the motivation, we can only, we can only suppose why this is happening, but uh, when we react to, to that facts, uh, it, seems to, uh, it seems to work. That's the same thing, uh, but uh, a little bit um, different view. So we see that we have some high value ordering just after we open delivery. And uh, we haven't figured out what's happening there. We have some, um, some, no, uh, I don't want to call it superstition, but we have an idea of what could that be. Uh, mostly it's like uh, company orders for, uh, for company launches or uh, meetings. So we want to figure that out and address that with, uh, with a specific offer that can go to these people and uh, can get us more uh, transactions from that insights. Okay, so what is next? Uh, quickly through that, um, one of the biggest challenges for delivery operations is uh, is delivery cost and the drivers and the time that they spend idle, so not delivering transaction. They can either wait for the in the restaurants for, for restaurant team to prepare that, or they can uh, not have a transaction assigned, or they can wait for the customer uh, at the door or they can drive in the traffic jam. So there's a number of things that, that we need to analyze that. That's why we want to engage machine learning here and a little bit of IoT. And uh, we also want to explore self-driving uh, opportunities to deliver more and more efficiently. That's uh, that's pure savings uh, directly to our restaurants PNL. So that's one of, one of our biggest focus. We are, we are right now building a dispatching solution so we can dispatch uh, drivers centrally, not within the restaurants, but uh, they could uh, operate on on multiple restaurants, and that not necessarily have to be only our restaurants. We can also deliver for uh, for others to make that model model even more efficient. Um, second thing is on the data. So again, big data, AI, and machine learning um, we see as options to help us to build predictive analytics to make sure that we will be able to identify the moment of customer, so the moment when he wants to transact before that moment happens and before that reveals within within customer mind and be the first uh, company that uh, that gets into that uh, into that uh, actions and um, third thing, we want the ordering to get even easier. So it's bots, Alexa, social media, and uh, we are exploring the possibility of conversational ordering. So you don't have to call a call center, but you don't have to click it, click the order through your mobile phone or desktop. But you can simply say that, uh, get me my favorite pizza. Hey, pizza, have get me my favorite pizza. And that's, um, what uh, what Amazon is doing with um, with Alexa and a number of other companies are trying in the US. We we want to be there. We haven't done much of it yet. We've launched in, we've launched both for for Pizza Hut. It's not performing as we expected it to to perform, but it has the other advantages that we didn't think when we launched it. So we can through the bot we can initiate conversation with um, with our with our customers. On Pizza Hut, it doesn't have to be initiated by um, um, by customer, and that's the finding we we have had here. And that's it on my end. I hope it was a little bit of uh, interesting. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to to answer them. So, a question from Ilse: uh, What were the key components you had to develop in order to build the foundations for your digital journey? Oh, so the key components turn out to be our e-commerce engine and we've reviewed the market and finally figure out that there is nothing that fits our need and we decided to to build it on our own and that was 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 the turning point because it did what we wanted it to do and it turned out that it also does what customers um, want 
The second layer of that was, was the database of, uh, of the customers and the data we've collected. And the third foundation that, uh, that we've built was a loyalty engine because we have initially have been using uh, an engine provided by our POS provider, but it had a lot of limitations, so we've built our own loyalty engine. And that also helped us to, to be much quicker in terms of what we can change and how we can uh, interact with, uh, with customers. Mm -hmm. The second question from my side, uh, I, hear, I hear a lot of people complaining um, about uh, analytic experts that, don't, that are not capable to talk with business. Um, how do you make sure that those two uh, work collaborate fr uh, fruitfully in, in your company? Yeah, so whenever we hire an analyst, uh, he will go through, through a month of working in operations. Before he even starts touching the data, he will work in the restaurants in each of them for a couple of days. He will work with delivery. He will work with uh, IT for a for, mm, couple of days. So we make sure that he understands the, the business. So he gets what it, what, it, what it is all about. So he doesn't come blind and says, okay, from my previous job, that seems, uh, seems to work, but he experiences the, the actual world of uh, how restaurants operate and how do we work. And that is, that is one of the big uh, points that first people like, because this is something new and they know it's, uh, it's not forever. But they, they they go. They even fry chicken in, in KFC. They go with the driver and deliver food. They they understand the challenges that that restaurants are uh, are facing with, and we connect them with um, with the other side of that picture, which is um, how this data flows to us and uh, and how we can understand them. And we also send them to a number of our partners, being the development company for our e-commerce engine. Uh, our digital uh, marketing agency, our digital media agency, the um, company that manages uh, Google Analytics for us, and also enhanced e-commerce. So they analyze, they, they understand the whole picture before they sit to, uh, to the data. We've done that two times already, and it seems to work very well. Both of the analysts came from financial world, so they didn't have anything to do with the, with the restaurants. And it takes them three months including that training month to take off and start delivering insights for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, one question a little bit more strategic um, because in the beginning of your presentation, you said that you were pretty late in the digital transformation. Uh, would you consider that a, a competitive advantage to wait and see what others are doing and then learn from that? Uh, that that depends really on the on the market and on the brand because for KFC it was a perfect strategy to wait and uh, because they have no competition in terms of uh, delivery for Pizza Hut we were definitely at least uh, in Poland and a couple other markets were definitely too late because um, there are global players that uh, have developed that um, in the US like Papa John's and uh, Domino's. And when they started entering our market and building restaurants, we immediately started falling behind them, um, both in number of delivery restaurants that we had and uh, with the technology, because they came with already built technology only applied to our market while we are still building that. Uh, so that really depends on the brand and the actual situation on, on the market. But I have to admit that it's easier to be, to be the second because you don't have to make all the mistakes that other people are doing. Yeah. Uh, one question for Maria about the impact of PSD2. Uh, how will you take advantage or not of the changes in the, in the payment industry? And how will it impact uh, your path and your priorities? Right now, it's, um, it's <coughs> not on, on top of our uh, priorities. And that's for the reason we um, we try to stay a, a, away from being um, PCI compliant, and that's provided by the, by, by the third party. 
and uh, we cooperate with them on on entering that but uh, honestly we haven't done much yet or anything pretty much yet on uh, uh, on exploring that uh, that option so um, we are not there yet yeah. um Mashi, thank you again thanks again for your presentation i think it was uh, really uh, interesting and insightful and i'll talk to you at the next occasion so thanks again